Get ready to take your illustrations away from your desktop computer and into your iPad. Now, vector artists will be able to create beautiful graphics, logos, icons and more using Adobe Illustrator on an iPad. Hi, I'm Jonathan Lamb from Envato Tuts Plus and in this video we'll get you up to speed fast on what's new with Adobe Illustrator for the iPad, how it works and why you should check it out. I'll show you how to use essential features such as the pen tool, the type tool, the iPad only symmetry tool and more. So before we begin, make sure to check out Envato Elements. With a subscription, you'll have unlimited access to assets such as the graphics and logos used in this tutorial. So check out the link below in the description to find out more. Let's get Adobe Illustrator from the Apple App Store. From the App Store main menu, Let's go ahead and tap on the search icon on the bottom right of the screen. And then we want to type in Adobe Illustrator using the keyboard like so. And then hit enter. And then Adobe Illustrator for the iPad should be the first option that appears from the results. Now just tap on the download or purchase button as you would normally when downloading an app. For those of you who are already familiar with the desktop version of Adobe Illustrator, prepare to be surprised. Compared to the desktop counterpart, the UI has been almost completely redone, and that's a good thing. Like most of Adobe's other recent mobile-focused apps, the UI has been simplified to allow users quicker access to the tools that they need. This means using the app will be a lot easier for beginners. So let's go ahead and check out what this looks like by clicking or tapping on the custom size icon here. And we just want to create a new file like so and create a new file by tapping on the create new file button here. And you can see over on the left side of the screen, we've got all of our essential tools, such as the pen tool, the pencil tool, the eraser tool, and the shape tool. And then over on the right of the screen here, we've got other available things such as layers, properties, and our alignment tools. Now you'll see here that there's also this circle which I'm dragging around the canvas here. Now this is the touch modifier which will allow us to quickly access alternate actions of a selected tool in Illustrator for our iPad. Now for an example, let's go ahead and create a circle here. Now if we go back to the touch modifier, you'll notice that there's two circles, one which is inside and one which is outside. To access the inner circle, simply tap and hold on the modifier. To access the outer circle, simply drag into the outer circle and you'll see now that we've accessed the secondary options here. So what, how does this affect our circle? So if we go back to the move tool where we can tap and drag our circle around the canvas. If we go ahead and tap on our modifier and then try and move our circle here, you'll see now that the movement of the circle is constrained to a 90 degree or a 45 degree angle. Now, if we go ahead and move into our secondary shortcut and try and use the move tool, you'll see now that we're duplicating our circle. This is just one example of the touch modifier that we can use. Often considered one of the most powerful tools in Illustrator's arsenal, the pen tool over on the left here is used for the majority of your workflow creating vectors. However, for most beginners, it can be a little bit tricky to use as it requires multiple other functions to make the most of it. This includes things such as these Bezier handles that you can see here and holding down specific keyboard functions for later adjustments. Using the pen tool on the iPad, on the other hand, is an absolute joy. 
It has been designed specifically to use with a touch device without the use of a keyboard. You can access it by tapping on the pen tool icon over on the left menu bar. The behavior of the pen tool on the iPad is very similar to the way it works on desktop. Tapping on different points on the canvas will create straight lines like so, whilst holding and dragging will create curves like so. Now to break a handle pairing, all we need to do is we need to activate this primary touch modifier shortcut, which can be shown as this round circle on the bottom left of the screen here. So we can activate both of these at the same time. So whilst modifying your handle like so, go ahead and use your other hand to touch the primary touch modifier. And now as we click and drag or tap and drag the handle, you'll see that we've now broken the handle pairing like so. Now to remove an anchor point, simply tap and hold on the anchor point like so to remove it. So just tapping and holding on an anchor point will remove it. Another powerful tool that's widely used in Adobe Illustrator is the pencil tool, which can be found on the left here or by pressing N on your keyboard. Now on desktop, this tool will allow you to create freeform paths as you click and drag along the screen. This will allow you to create fast sketches or creating that hand-drawn look to your illustrations. Using the pencil tool on the iPad has some cool new features that are unique to the device. Firstly, when you are using a continuous line by tapping and dragging on the iPad, if you go ahead and stop your path and then draw again, you'll create these corner points. Now these are extremely useful when separating your curves while still using one continuous line. Another thing which is quite useful is if you go ahead and tap on the primary modifier tool as you're drawing, you'll create straight lines at a 90 or 45 degree angle, like so. You can also set the smoothing for the pencil tool by clicking or tapping on the bottom left icon here. Now a higher value will give you a smoother curve where a lower value will give you more points. Unique to the iPad version of Adobe Illustrator is the Symmetry tool. Now you can find this on the right side of the screen here and just go ahead and select Mirror. Once you've done that, you'll see that we've got a new symmetry line which we can go ahead and adjust like so. And we can also go ahead and start creating some illustrations on the left side of the screen and you'll see straight away that it is being mirrored on the right side of the screen live, which is extremely useful if you want to see exactly what sort of result you're going to get in real time. To create a radial pattern using the desktop version of Adobe Illustrator, you need to begin by first creating a shape like so. Now, once you've done that, let's go ahead and press R on the keyboard and then go ahead and Alt click on the canvas to bring up our rotate dialog box. Now, once we've gone ahead and done that, we want to go ahead and enter a fraction for the angle, such as 360 over 20. Go ahead and click on the copy button. And then upon returning to the artboard, we just need to duplicate this by pressing Ctrl and D on the keyboard on repeat until we have our radial pattern, like so. Back on the iPad, creating a radial pattern is much easier. So let's go ahead and start with a simple circle again, like so. And then we want to simply use the radial tool, which is on the bottom right here. Once we've selected it, you'll see now that our circle straight away has been turned into a radial pattern. And we can simply reduce the size or increase the size of our pattern using the corner widgets like so. And we can also increase or decrease the amount of circles inside our pattern by tapping and dragging on the arrows 
on the right of our widget here. And we can also go ahead and use this slider to reduce or increase the amount of shapes within our radial pattern. To create text on a path, you must first create the path that you want to use. So let's go ahead and create a circle like so. Then we want to click on the type tool and we want to click and hold on it until we can see the type on path tool here. Select that. And with that selected, simply hover over the path that you want to use until it highlights blue, indicating that you can apply the tool to the path and then just click anywhere on the path to add your text like so. On the iPad, creating text on the path is even easier than on the desktop version. First, let's go ahead and create our path, which is going to be a circle, exactly like what we did previously. Then let's go ahead and select our type tool, tap and drag to create our text, like so. Make sure the text is sitting on top of our path. And then we're going to use the selection tool on the top left here. Select both the text and our path like so. Then use the type tool here on the right and select type on path. And then you'll see straight away our text is on the path. Awesome. Now that we're familiar with the tools and the functions of Adobe Illustrator for the iPad, let's go ahead and create a simple logo using these tools. So first of all, I'm going to choose the circle shape tool here. We're just going to draw out a small circle, a simple circle like so. And then we're going to go ahead and draw another circle. This time, let's go ahead and choose a, another color for our circle. So let's draw one out first and then using the color picker here, we're just going to choose a quick color like so. I'm just going to place it over this large circle and just going to reshape it into the shape that I want. And then once I'm happy with the shape, I'm going to use the selection tool, select both of these circles like so. And then I'm just going to go over to the right here under combine shapes and choose minus front like so. Excellent. And then once that's done, let's go ahead and select convert to path. And that will create our first shape for the circle. And then the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. So let's go ahead and select our circle here and press the duplicate button, which is next to the dustbin or the uh, delete button here. And then we're going to click and drag over here like so. And let's go ahead and choose a different color for this one. And let's go ahead and duplicate it one more time. Like so. And choose another color for this one. Excellent. Now, the top circle is what I'm going to use for my top layer of my logo. And then let's go ahead and select this secondary circle here. And I'm just going to go ahead and make it smaller. And let's see if we can go ahead and rotate it. Now, if we go ahead and tap on the top, the very top widget here, we can rotate our circle like so. So let's go ahead and rotate this circle to something that looks like this. And then I'm just going to move it into place. And then with our final black circle, let's go ahead and scale this down. Now we've also duplicated this one. So let's go ahead and delete that. And I'm just going to move this into place and then rotate it to a position or an angle that I want, like so. And then just scale them up. Excellent. Now to color in our logo, let's go ahead and select the first shape here, which is the one on top. And we're going to tap on the color circle on the bottom left here. And let's go ahead and select gradient and then select either a linear 
or a radial gradient. Let's select the linear gradient here. And from here, let's go ahead and select what colors we're going to use. Now, depending on what end of the gradient that we're tapping on, so if we tap on the left widget over here, we can go ahead and choose what sort of color that we're going to use. So let's go ahead and choose a nice bluish color, like so. And then let's go ahead and tap on the widget on the right. And now we can select what sort of color we're going to use for this one. So let's go ahead and choose an even lighter color, like so. And then if we go back to our logo here and tap on the gradient, we can also move where the gradient sort of transitions if we scrub back and forth on the middle here, like this. Excellent. Next, let's go ahead and do the same with the other circles. Excellent. Adobe Illustrator for the iPad has definitely been worth the wait. With its unique features and modern minimalistic look, it really feels at home on the iPad. So there you have it. Now that we've compared some key features between the desktop version and the iPad version of Adobe Illustrator, hopefully you'll have a better idea of the advantages and disadvantages of each. So have fun creating your own vector designs and logos on the iPad, and I'll see you next time on Tuts Plus.